There are a couple of suspension myths that persist even to this day. Here is suspension myth number one. The showroom suspension settings on my bike are correct. Manufacturers know what they're doing, duh. If you've watched Dave's videos, especially from back in the auto throttle days, we did a series called uh, sh Suspension Off the Showroom Floor. We would go around to dealerships and put three different weight representations or classes of people on the bike. Usually a gal who weighed about 130 to 150 pounds, and then me at 175, and then Chris Maddy at 240. It was remarkable to see, even just setting the sag, uh, what the difference was. Remember, in this instance, when you get past 35, 40 millimeters of sag, the back of the bike is collapsing and causing the front to extend. So until you fix that problem, you're really never going to truly get an accurate measurement. So, and in the front, Lisa has 20 millimeters of sag. So obviously, this bike is, is definitely completely mismatched front to back with springs and spring rates. So. Now you'll notice in this video of, uh, of the, um, a Kawasaki and Dave demonstrates what happens. Uh, and these were just, uh, this didn't have anything to do with hydraulics. Get to that in a minute. This just had to do with uh, the uh, spring rates. Lisa in the back is 23 millimeters. So with a, knowing that this shock spring is pretty soft, we can adjust the sag in the back of the bike will work if you're 140 pounds or less. So we, I'd probably say 110 to 100 and 150 will be about the target range for this shock spring. Uh, and in the front forks, eight millimeters of sag, which basically <laughs> means forks, the forks don't work. So if Chris can pan back a little bit and Lisa sits up and down on the seat, you'll see that the front forks don't move. It pivots on the steering head. That's how stiff this front end is. So without question, you've got to have to do something with this bike. If you're 150 pounds or less, get the springs changed immediately and get the bike set and balanced with preload. Because right now, if you ride this bike, all it's going to do is squat in the back and take the front wheel off the ground. And if you're in a downhill off camber turn, you have no traction in the front wheel unless you deliberately shut the throttle and load the front. So that's a, that's a pretty dangerous situation to be in, so be aware of that. This says, you know, this has, this has nothing about the amount of preload that's installed. There have been a couple of two clicks out this year. I can't remember if it was the S1000 or the R1. There's no preload installed at all in the bike. None. Zip. Off the showroom floor, there's none. So 25 in the back, so that's perfect, but it's way too soft in the front. So let's add some preload. So right, this is off the showroom floor, untouched. Too soft in the front. And it's manual adjust, it's not DDS. So everything is screwdriver, etc. So, so let's start from zero. So zero preload in the forks. That's exactly how they come from the factory. One, two. Then that has nothing to do with the valving. Some years ago, if you remember, there was the, uh, uh, what were those Ducatis called? They were retro Ducatis. Just shy of an inch and a quarter, it's an inch and three eighths. So perfectly set up for her weight, so 130, 150. This bike's actually right on the money in the shock. And just barely over three and a half inches. So if you're in the weight range 130 to 150, this bike right out of the showroom spring-wise is excellent. And one of them was called the Paul Smart Edition. Came with full Olin suspension. Ooh. Dave started seeing these things showing up at the track all the time because they were set up you to buy one so you could immediately take it to the track with the Olin suspension, right? And these people were just wadding them to the moon. Turned out that the rebound circuit in the shock was completely shut or like a half a turn open from shut. So the bike couldn't open up, right? You come out of the corner, you get on the gas, 
the rebound circuit shut, right? The whole anti-squat thing, the bike wants to open up when you roll on the gas. It couldn't, it was stuck. But the front, the rebound circuit was open. I don't remember how open, but it was open. So what was happening to these guys is they would come out of the turn, they'd roll on the gas, and the bike, instead of rising together, the front rose so fast compared to the back, which was stuck down, that they just lost the front. The bike just pinged off the ground. Boom, low siding. On the gas out of the front. Now I used to have a clip of Rossi on the Ducati at Aragon doing that and the bus stopped before the big long back straight and they they had done slowed it down really well and you could see you could hear and see him crack the throttle and the front start to rise and wash out in the turn so this idea that a the spring rates are correct on your bike and b that the settings are in any way shape or form where they should be even to try and hit some kind of neutral ground, uh, absolutely not the case. You can't necessarily trust the suspension and or the settings, the spring rates and or the settings on a stock bike off the showroom floor. Be sure to check out the Dave Moss Tuning app for iOS and Android. There you'll find grundles and grundles of information on tires, suspension setup and more.